Hello, this is Colin McDonald back for another Visual Basic tutorial. And this particular tutorial is going to continue our data grid view tutorials. And we're going to look at the data grid view from a programmatic perspective. So programmatically doing it at runtime. So setting up the columns, cell, creating rows and cells. And we're going to populate it from a two-dimensional array. I'm going to set some cell properties and then we'll also do uh, the cell click event just so you can sort of see how event arguments work with the data grid view. So let's go straight to it. And so I have set up a form here already and I've set up a couple of uh, lines of code as well just so we can get started quickly. So when I start the form up and I click on the array button, what it does is it uses the constants that I've, arrived, that I've used here from the number of rows, columns, and some uh, randomization, minimum and maximum. And then I've set up a two-dimensional array here for values. And again, number of rows and number of columns minus one because they started zero. When I click the set array button, it's going to just take random numbers and populate the two-dimensional array with random numbers between the minimum and maximum, which in this case is 0 to 100. So what I'm actually going to do is sort of simulate students in courses and the marks that they receive, basically. All right. And so let's get into this right away. So when we have our data grid view, there's a few things you want to do right away. Go to your smart tag and unturning, adding, editing, and deleting off in this particular case. Um, note that I have no columns in here. I don't want any columns in here. If I have columns in here using the smart tag uh, edit columns dialog, then it's going to have two different ways to define columns and the compiler doesn't like that. So we're going to just leave it with no columns in there and we're going to go ahead and use this button event to define the columns. So what we're going to do is we've now created our columns click event. So we're going to start right away by creating some columns. That's the first thing you have to do. So before you create columns though, you have to clear any existing ones that exist. And I know that in this particular case there shouldn't be any, but again I like to create my code that's reusable. So if I'm going to reuse this, I need to clear the columns. So then we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to dim a quick little variable here. And we're going to call this a data grid view text box column. Okay. You have to give it a column. The, the data grid view column exists, but it will not allow you to use that for adding it because it doesn't have a defined cell style. So by doing a text box column, you're defining the cell. So now we're going to do for column index as integer equals 0 to num of columns minus 1. Okay. And I spelled integer wrong. Okay. So this now allows us to loop through all the columns in the array. And we're going to say column equals new text box column. And then we're, we're going to set some properties for the column. So you have to set a name. So we're going to set the name to be uh, column again, nice Hungarian notation. Um, and uh, column number, or column index, sorry, index uh, plus one. I would just say column index. And then we'll say column dot header text equals C and I'm going to use a plus one here because I want the first column to be one from the user interface perspective. I'm going to set the column width here and I'm going to use this column width to be the data grid view randoms dot width divided by the number of columns and then I'm going to add one to the number of columns just so I give myself a little playroom. Okay, And then the last thing we have to do is actually add that column to the data grid view. There we go. So basically that defines the columns within the data grid view. So let's just run this quickly and see how that works. So I'm going to click on the array button and all it does in the background it was randomize the array and when I click on columns you can see now it defines my 10 columns for me and they're all text box columns. But I can't put any data in here yet. 
So let's do that now. We'll go to the rows button here. We'll create the event. And now we're going to define the rows. In order to define a row, you have to add, create a series of cells and add those cells to the row. And then once that all the cells are complete in the row, you can then add the row to the data grid view. So we're going to go me dot data grid view uh, dot rows dot clear. Again, we always want to clear things out before we start. Uh, then my row as as data grid view row. Now you don't need to define the type of row, you just define the row itself. Then my cell as data grid view text box cell. Okay. So we're in this particular case we're only using text box cells. So then we can set a quick loop up here to iterate through the rows. So now once we we start iterating through the rows, first thing we have to do is say my row equals a new data grid view row. Um, and then we can say, I'm just going to quickly set the height. So my data grid view height equals data grid view, uh, data grid view height divided by num rows. Again, I'm going to add one, just give me myself some wiggle room. And now I've defined my row. So now I have to go through and add a series of cells. And I'm going to use the number of columns as my number of cells. And that way I can make sure that I have a cell for each column that's defined. So then again, you have to instantiate the, you have to instantiate the cell object. And then we're going to actually put the value in and the value is going to be from my two-dimensional array, um, which allows me to just put a random number in there. Remember, we defined that earlier. And the last thing I want to do is I want to set another property here. And what I'm going to do is um, <coughs> use my two-dimensional array as my select case statement here. And I, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set some background colors based on the random number. So basically a pass warning fail type of a system. So I'm going to do case less than 50, case less than 65, and case else, meaning they're doing well. So if they're less than 50, they failed. So we're going to set the background color, and that's within the style collection. Um, and we're going to set that to, say, light pink. Okay. And then if they're at 65, we're going to flag it as a bit of a warning here so that we can say, hey, how you doing? And we're gonna set that as light yellow for warning. And if everything is good, we're just gonna set the background to um, light green, say, as in good to go. Oh, that's not green, that's great. So light green. So once we've defined the cell properties, we have to add those cell properties to the row. So we go to the cells collection within the row and we add, the cell. And there we go. So now we can, can, can do the next uh, column, add it to that row, and continue from there. Once we've defined all the columns for one particular row, we need to add that row to the data grid view. Uh, rows collection. And then once we're, we've added that, we can go on to the next row. So we add the row then the next we'll, we'll go back up to the for loop for the rows, create a new row, set its height, and continue on adding all the columns. And that's sort of the basics of it. So again, you define your columns, you define a row, you add enough cells for the number of columns to the row, and then you add the row to the data grid view, and you loop through for each row. So let's run this quickly and see what happens. So when we run, I'm going to click the array button and initialize the arrays, does all the random numbers. I click columns, it defines the columns for the grid, and then I click rows, and it goes ahead and adds the rows one cell at a time. Okay? And the last thing I want to show you here is that, well, first of all, yeah, you can, you can actually click on them, but you can also use events with the grid. And with the event, I've used actually the cell click event here, 
And so it'll come up and it'll tell me which row and column in in. So row five, column seven. Now, key note here, I've adjusted these numbers by adding one to them because columns actually start at zero and rows start at zero. So for it to display the same way I see it, I've added one so that they match. Um, and I'll show you that code right now. And that code is right here. Let me close down the properties. So it's just a message box saying you clicked on. And within the cell click event, you have the delegate. So the sender is object and E is data grid view cell event args. And so e.rowindex and e.columnindex will give you the index numbers that you've actually clicked on. Again, I've added one to them such that it starts at one because they actually start at zero. And then the value, I can use current cell value. I can also um, define the cell by the row index and column index, uh, which I also have. Or I can also go ahead and um, use the click event args to get the current cell as well. So there's different ways you can get the value within the cell, um, but for this particular case, this is the easiest way to do it. So when we actually run the program one more time, define the array columns and rows, when I click on it, it's actually finding row index 4, column index 6, and that has value 16 in it. Again, I've just added one to the display so we make it more human. Thank you very much.